Hey, what's up guys, Alex here, thank you for checking this video and welcome to the episode number 39 of the series of tutorial on how to build a premium theme for WordPress. Welcome again, in this tutorial we're going to take a look on how to build finally the single .php file, that file that handles the visualization of a single blog post. But before doing that I have to give another shout out to Mark Waters that suggested another pretty great code improvement. If we access our ajax.php file, and if you remember in the last lesson, we improved a lot our code, the performances of our code here, but there's also a little bit of more room to improvement. We could do potentially something more. Here we have an if statement, we three his set, and then inside this if statement, if it's true, we are repeating again this same three his set to detect what kind of type we are looking in our URL. Mark Waters suggested a pretty good code implementation that is the following. The solution he adopted is based on a switch case system instead of multiple if statements. So first of all, what he did was removing this stuff, this declaration inside the if statement because uh, we are pretty safe. We can actually do that because if we don't have any archive, so if the archive is different, it's equal to zero, this code won't be executed. And that means that we won't have any issue with the archive. We can control control the data attribute, so we're pretty safe to live this declaration here with the variable of current key, next key value, value and arguments for our WP query only inside this single if statement. We don't have to check also if our archive has one of these three values because we are coding this theme by ourselves, so this theme, the code will follow our direction and if the archive is set, it means that anyway, in any case, one of these three is gonna be through, so we can leave this stuff outside. Then what he did was converting this multiple if statement into one simple switch case scenario. So let's select everything and let's command this code so we're not gonna use it for now. And here we can convert everything with a switch case option. So the switch case option is basically like a multiple if statement and it's a function, a native function of PHP. The switch case works basically with a single statement here inside the switch and then this switch will activate different cases inside the switch itself. So for example here we have to check if this variable is set because we don't want to do that if our dollar flipped variable is not set. So we're switching every time we're passing this variable. So the variable that in our case is the flipped array of our archive is set. We can detect in the case our flipped variable it's equal to category column we can execute something specific and in our case we want to declare that the type is equal to category and the key is equal the type is equal to category name and the key is equal to category to end and close this case we have to use a break break and semicolon now we can declare another case and basically it's going to be exactly the same but for another option so in the case we have the flipped tag column, we can specify these other two variables. The type that it's equal to tag and the key it's identical to type. And also here we can block this case and stop the execution of this case with a break. And then we can do just the last one, the last option in case we have this variable author inside the flipped array, we can execute these two variables. We can generate the key, the type, it's equal to author, and the key, it's equal to type. And then let's break. 
So as you can see here, this switch function doesn't really uh, contract a lot the, the line of code, the amount of line of code, but what it does, it prevents us to call the function is set six times. And this is a really good practice because we are calling the is set function just one to detect if the variable, the array flipped is set. And in case it's set, we can check inside three times. We can check the case case we have a flipped category, in case we have a flipped tag, in case we have a flipped author, and we can declare different outcome every time we have one of these cases matches the variable that we're passing inside the switch declaration. And this is a really good and streamlined uh, code optimization and it prevents us to write multiple times the same variables, the same declaration and the same function is set. Always remember that PHP, to optimize PHP, you don't have to care about the amount of line of code, but you have to care about how many native functions of PHP you call because those functions are the things that make PHP heavy on your server memory, on your computing system. So if you have too many functions repeated multiple times, that could affect the performances of your website. Instead, if you have just one function or less function than we had before, this code is way more optimized. And it's also way easier to maintain because we don't have multiple if statement, multiple declaration, and it's a way cleaner way of printing your code. So thank you again, Mark Waters. Your suggestions were great. Now we are ready to move on with our single.php file. So let's close this file and let's create a new file called single.php that if you followed my WordPress 101 for beginner developer series, you know that this file, the single.php file, is the file that handles and manages every time we have a request to print a single file that most likely will be a blog post. So let's open this file and let's write a little bit of code. To help us and not repeat code and not to rewrite everything from scratch, we can copy a little bit the option and the code of the index.php that it's going to be pretty similar, but of course we have something slightly different. So first let's paste this code, let's maintain the get header and let's maintain the wrapper that we have around the primary ID with the content area, main ID with the site main and the role main for our HTML5 wrapper. We can completely remove the uh, check of the pagination to activate the load previous button and we can also remove the sunset post container class we want to just maintain the class container the native of bootstrap we want to remove the page limit because we won't have that we don't need the pagination we can remove completely this stuff and here we can change a little bit the format of the stuff so for now we are gonna call for just the single.php inside the template parts section. So the get post format is gonna change based on the type of post format. So we're gonna have single audio, single um, gallery, single image, and so on, so on. But for now, we're gonna just style a, a unique single file to print everything, and we won't need to edit and to update the uh, post format. Let's remove these hacko. We can leave the container and we can remove the load more button here. But here we have to add a little bit more. So first of all, I wanna access also the default post navigation of WordPress. And also I wanna activate the comments section if the comments are active inside our blog post. So inside the while loop after the calling of the post and after the calling of the template that we wanna include, we can simply call the default built-in function of WordPress to load the post navigation. And to do that, we have to just simply call the function d underscore post underscore navigation open and close the brackets, no variable needs to be passed. And here we can write the comment section. So to activate the comment section, we can write the function comments underscore template, oops. And we don't need to pass any type of variable. We wanna maintain the default, but we don't wanna call this function to act activate the comment section if the comment are deactivated or it doesn't really exist 
the comment option because could happen that a user decides to deactivate completely the comments for the entire website. In order to do that, we have to wrap this function around an if statement and we can check if open and close the brackets, the comments underscore are open. So by simply writing comments open, this is a Boolean function that will return true or false in case our comments are open. Let's indent this, here we can write and if. So we want and if. So, so we want print at all the comments template in case our current post that we're viewing is not has not activated the comment section. Let's save it. Let's go back in our front end. Let's refresh the home page. Let's scroll down. Let's access the gallery.php. And here, of course, we are inside local sunset forward slash gallery dash two. That is the permalink of the post. But here we have everything missing. Basically, we just have the post navigation. And we have also a deprecated notice for the missing of the page comments.php. So we have to create also that section. Before doing this, we have to uh, generate the actual content of our single.php file because right now we are calling a file inside the templates part folder that doesn't really exist. So let's solve this issue. Let's go back here, let's open our template parts and let's create a new file called single.php. Let's open. And inside this file, we can again reuse a lot of code that we already created previously in our content type here. So if we access the content.php, this is the standard type of content that we're printing in the home page with a future ready image. We can basically use this entire code, but change a little bit stuff around to include something different. So let's copy this entire code and let's access the single.php file. Let's paste it here. Let's change a course the comment initially so single post template here we can leave everything like it is with the header the article and so on but we want to remove the permalink to the actual post because we are already inside a blog post but we want to maintain the same style so let's leave the h1 wrapper around the title let's leave the post metadata because we want to have the post metadata to show the user whatever they want and then now we can print the content of our blog post but we don't want to print anymore the uh, future image because we don't want to force the user to have a future image inside a blog post they can control this and they can upload whatever content they want. Probably in the future we're gonna give them the option if you want to extend the sunset option to print automatically the future image inside the post but for now we just remove the section and inside the entry excerpt let's remove completely this stuff and let's just cut this PHP code let's remove the button to read more and inside the entry content section we can just paste the PHP and just write the content instead of the excerpt. This will print entirely the content of our blog post. Let's save it, let's go back in our front end, let's refresh this page, and here we have the gallery to <laughs> blog post that has this content that we wrote, and it's pretty ugly, but we have the gallery there are pointing, all the images there are pointing to the pictures that I uploaded, we have the footer, and we have the subheader with the timing and the category where this post belong to. Let's access actually a better post that I think is the last or at least the first blog post that I uploaded that has a pretty decent amount of content. So let's keep scrolling, let's keep scrolling. I think should be the last one. Yes, it's the standard post title. If I access this one, I have the title, the full content of the post and the proper header. Here we have the post navigation with the image post title that of course this is the last one, so it's not uh, showing the, the future one, but if we click on this link to check if the post navigation works. Perfect, we are right now in the post title, in the image post title type that we have to style a little bit because this is kind of ugly. But as you can see here, now we have the standard post title and the audio post title both 
links are pushed to the left and both these links are not really indicative of which post is the next one which post is the previous one because they uh, are pushed completely so we have to take care of this so it's pretty much it for today's lesson we didn't complete of course but we have a lot of more things to do to improve this section and to create and fully code the single .php file but thank you guys for checking this video hope you enjoyed if you did please give it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel and if you want you can spend a couple of minutes to check the support me page on my website where you can find all different ways and methods to support me support my channel and help me to do a better videos and better tutorials for you thank you again guys and until the next lesson as usual happy coding